For classification of the impression materials, we have different uh, ways for classification, but uh, the, the most important way is the classification according to elasticity of the impression material after setting, okay? So the impression materials are classified according to elasticity into two groups. The first group is called non-elastic uh, impression materials or rigid impression materials. And the second group is called elastic impression materials. For the uh, non-elastic impression materials, we have a plaster of Paris, a compound and zinc oxide eugenol impression material. For the elastic impression materials, we have uh, hydrocolloids and uh, elastomers. And uh, hydrocolloids include agar and alginate. Elastomers include polysulfide, silicones, and polyether. So what is the importance of classification of impression materials according to elasticity after setting? Of course, we know here that if the material is rigid, so, so it is indicated only for edentulous patients without undercut. Uh, as we said before, rigid impression materials are used only for edentulous patients without undercut because we said that the rigid impression material, when it gets inside the undercut, it, this will be difficult to be removed from this undercut without breaking. Okay, so rigid impression materials are used only for edentulous patients without undercut, while elastic impression materials are used for dentulous or edentulous patients without any problem because they, they can record the undercut and get out from the undercut by their elasticity without any breaking. Here is a, an important notice. We have to notice that the flow of the impression material before setting determines the ability of the material to record fine details. As we mentioned, if the material have, has high flow, it will get inside the fine details and record them very accurately. So it deti determines the type of tray used. If the material, if I, uh, if the material has high flow, so it will record fine details. So I need fine details in the secondary impression. So in this case, I will use which type of tray? It is the special tray, not the uh, stuck tray. Uh, uh, the other thing is the elasticity. We measure elasticity of the material after setting, not before setting. Uh, elasticity after setting determines the ability of the material to be re removed from undercuts. Okay, so this uh, determines the type of patient. So if the patient has is edentulous without any undercut, so I have I can use uh, the rigid impression material. But if the patient is dangerous and, and uh, has any undercuts, so I must use elastic impression material. I uh, have another classification of impression materials according to their setting reaction. We have some material that is set by physical reaction and others set by chemical reaction. And always the physical reaction is reversible because it, it depends on heating and cooling of the material. So when I heat the material, it, it will be soft and when I leave the material to cool down it will become hard so this is a reversible reaction so always the physical the materials which set by physical reaction are reversible and reusable I can re I can use them many times but of course after disinfection uh, the materials that set by physical reaction we have a material called impression compound we have agar agar uh, but for the materials that set by uh, chemical reaction these materials uh, during setting undergo a certain uh, chemical reaction. So I can't reverse this reaction again, so it occurs one time only. So we call this material, these materials irreversible impression materials. We have zinc oxide, eugenol, alginate, and rubber base as, as uh, examples for the chemical reaction materials. Today we'll talk about the rigid impression materials. Uh, the first uh, example we have is the impression compound. Uh, as we see here, the impression compound it comes to me in the form of sticks or sheets, as we can see. Uh, these sticks and sheets uh, uh, are uh, softened. They, they come as hard material, as you can see. They are softened by heat. So we heat them to become soft, and then we can use them. That's why you call this material thermoplastic impression material. Thermoplastic means that this material is softened by heating and hardened by cooling. And this is the idea of using the impression um, compound. We soften it uh, by heating, then put it against the oral tissues in the soft state and let it to, coo to cool down. And uh, after cooling, it becomes ha hard 
and set and then we can take it out from the ore cavity. The composition of this material consists of thermoplastic materials. This gives the thermoplasticity which we talked about. Uh, we have some fillers to give body of the material. Uh, we have plasticizer to, uh, to act as lubricants and control consistency of the material. We have coloring agents to give characteristic color. Now, what are the types and uses of impression compound? Firstly, we have type 1 impression compound is called lower fusing compound and, ha and it has fusing temperature below 70 uh, degrees Celsius. Uh, we have three forms of this, uh, or uh, uh, three uses of this uh, material. Uh, the sheet form, uh, which we saw before, this is used for taking a primary impression for edentulous patient and without undercut. And why uh, do we have to use it for primary impression and for taking for impression for edentulous patient without undercut? Firstly, primary impression because the material, as we will see uh, later, its flow is not very high, its uh, flow is low, so in this case it will not record fine details. That's why we have to use it to take primary impression only. And it is used for edentulous patient without undercut. Why? Because this material is rigid. After setting, it will, it will become rigid. So I cannot use it with any undercut. Uh, the, uh, the second uh, use is the, for the stick form. The stick form, we, we see here the stick form, it is used for what we call border tracing. What is border tracing? Uh, during taking the impression for completely edentulous patient, we need to, to record the details of the uh, sulcus, oral sulcus, and to take the, the, this, this part of the, uh, of the oral cavity to take the impression of the sulcus. We can use this stick form by heating the sticks, and then when they become uh, soft, uh, as, as we can see here, we put them on the bo in the borders of the tray, uh, then uh, press them ag against the, the uh, uh, oral tissues to record the, the details of the sulcus, okay? Because this part is very important uh, during uh, making a, uh, a complete denture for the, denture, for the patient. Uh, uh, the third uh, use of this uh, type is, uh, is also for the stu uh, stick, uh, stick form. Uh, some sticks are used for uh, recording an impression called copper band impression. And the copper band impression is used to take an impression for single tooth only by, by uh, heating the sticks and making them soft and then putting them in a copper band and, uh, which is pressed against the tooth to take a prime, uh, an impression, a primary impression also for uh, a single tooth. The second type is called higher fusing compound. The high fusing compound has, high, uh, has fusion temperature that is above 70 degrees Celsius, okay? So at this temperature, I can't put the material inside the oral cavity because the, the patient cannot uh, bear 70 degree, degrees. It, this will cause uh, a thermal shock to the patient. So I use them outside of the oral cavity by pressing uh, when I uh, uh, make this material soft after softening. I uh, make a special, I use this uh, material to make a special tray on a, a, a primary cast of the patient, okay? So this material, the higher fusing compound, is used only to make a special tray for the patient. Uh, the technique used uh, here is called the wash impression technique. Now about the setting reaction of uh, impression compound, uh, we said the the, this material undergoes a physical reversible reaction which is thermoplastic uh, reaction. Uh, the material comes uh, uh, as a hard material, and for softening of the material, we use uh, hot water at uh, 45 to 55 degrees. And then after uh, putting the impression inside the oral cavity, we, load, we let the material to cool down, and uh, at about 35 uh, degrees, the material becomes hard again. So this is the setting of the material. And as we can see, it is reversible. Uh, how can we use this material to take the impression? For manipulation of, uh, zinc of uh, uh, impression compound, uh, we have to soften the material firstly. Uh, to soften the material, we use uh, water bath, hot water bath to soften the material. Uh, and during, uh, uh, during softening of the material, we must uh, knead the material under uh, hot water 
to make to make it uh, soft uh, and then we put the material in the tray to take the impression as we can see here uh, the material has a very low flow it is a very viscous material so which type of tray w w do we have to use of course this consistency will not record fine details so we have to take primary impression only with this material so the type of tray used is a stuck tray uh, when we put the tray inside the oral cavity we let, we let the, the material to cool down uh, so after complete co uh, co hardening and cooling of the material we remove it uh, out from the oral cavity and then we, can, we have to sterilize the material by autoclaving for 10 minutes so what are the properties of the impression compound? Uh, firstly, uh, this material is not very uh, accurate because it doesn't record fine details. So we use the, it only for primary impression. Uh, the material uh, uh, undergoes some shrinkage, so the dimensional stability is not very high. About the elasticity, we mentioned that this material is rigid. It becomes rigid after setting, so it cannot be used for Dentulous patients or for patients with which contain undercut. The material is compatible with the cast and dye materials, so, so it doesn't need any separating medium before pouring the cast. Uh, for, and after pouring the cast, we can separate the impression from the cast only by some warm water. The, as the material is reversible, so it can be reused, but of course, after sterilization. Uh, a very good uh, advantage of uh, impression compound is that it can be added or corrected because it is uh, reversible as we mentioned uh, and it is not toxic material it has a suitable setting time it, go, it has a long shelf life and it can be copper plated the next uh, rigid impression material that we will talk about is the zinc oxide eugenol impression material it comes uh, in the form of two paste as we can see here two paste in two collapsible tubes. Uh, the, the first uh, paste is uh, the base paste and it is white. Uh, the base paste contains zinc oxide and it contains uh, inert oils. The catalyst paste is red and it contains eugenol. Uh, it contains uh, gum rosin and oils. It contains uh, magnesium chloride or zinc acetate as accelerators. And it contains uh, moisture and this is a very important component of uh, zinc oxide eugenol and we will know why here this is the setting reaction of zinc oxide eugenol material the setting reaction here is a chemical reaction called re chelation so it is irreversible because it is a chemical reaction the reaction here uh, takes place on two steps the first step is called hydrolysis and during hydrolysis the material reacts with water okay so the zinc oxide which is the base paste uh, reacts firstly with water to give zinc hydroxide okay so the first step is what is the reaction with water the second step is the chelation reaction during this step the zinc hydroxide reacts with eugenol to give zinc eugenolate with is which is the set material so we notice here the, that the first step is the reaction with water that's why I, I said that uh, moisture is a very important component of zinc oxide eugenol paste because if, if it doesn't contain moisture, so the, so the reaction will never happen. That's why the uh, moisture must be included inside the components of the uh, catalyst paste. To control the setting time, we can, uh, can accelerate the setting time either by heat or by chemicals uh, like uh, primer alcohol or by water or uh, saliva to accelerate the reaction. How do, the, how do we manipulate uh, zinc oxide eugenol? Uh, we take two, two equal lengths of the paste on a wax paper pad as we see. Then we mix the, the two paste until a homogeneous color is obtained. Then what is the type of tray? We, then we uh, take the material to the uh, tray. What type of tray we use here? We said that the type of tray is determined from the flow of the material. And as we see here, as the material is a paste form, so it has a good flow, it has a high flow. So I can use it for taking secondary impression. That's why I use a special tray. 
but here the special tray must be uh, made from acrylic or compound. But shellac is contraindicated with zinc oxide digenol as uh, zinc oxide digenol may affect the shellac material. Uh, to, to put the impression material in the tray, the tray must be very uh, must be dry to allow uh, complete ad uh, adherence between the tray and the uh, impression material. Uh, then I put it inside the oral cavity and let it to uh, to uh, to set for about three to five minutes. Uh, that, uh, then uh, I I take it out from the oral cavity and disinfect the material and pour it without any separating medium. It doesn't need any separating medium, uh, so there there it is very compatible with the cast material. What are the properties of zinc oxide oxygenol material? Uh, as we saw here, the material has a good flow, so it, it can record fine details. This is a good uh, uh, property. Uh, for dimensional stability, the material is, uh, uh, has no or very little dimension changes, and this is also a very good advantage. For the elasticity, the material, as we said, it is not elastic. It is a rigid impression material, so it is contraindicated for patients with undercut. Uh, the material also can be added or corrected, and this is a good uh, advantage. Uh, it is uh, compatible with uh, cast materials, so it doesn't need any separating medium to affect the accuracy. Uh, a very common disadvantage of zinc oxide eugenol is that eugenol is an irritant material. So it causes some burning sensation to the patients. Uh, that's why we have a, a new material uh, from zinc oxide paste, it is called eugenol free zinc oxide paste. For eugenol free zinc oxide paste, here the eugenol is replaced by a material called ethoxybenzoic acid. Uh, this material will give the same uh, similar reaction uh, to the that of zinc oxide eugenol, but here with little ir irritating effect. Okay, in this case, the catalyst is blue rather than red in zinc oxide eugenol. The setting reaction here is called saponification rather than chelation of zinc oxide eugenol. What are the uses of zinc oxide uh, eugenol paste? It is used to take secondary impression for edentious patient without undercut. And we said uh, secondary because it, uh, it has good flow. And for edentious patient without undercut because it is a rigid material. It can be used for wash impression technique or uh, double impression technique uh, in which we uh, form a tray of uh, compound firstly and then we put a layer of zinc oxide eugenol to take the secondary impression. We can use the material for taking impression in an old uh, denture for relining if the denture needs relining. Thank you.